protein, whereas in Oxytrica it was a rather abundant protein. And finally, I would like to assure you that I did not do all of this work myself, or I'm sure you've already guessed that. I've tried to, uh, and I'm sure I've been rather incomplete about giving proper credit to my coworkers, but I've tried, when I could remember it, to mention my own coworkers and laboratories throughout the world that we stay in close touch with uh, to try to learn from each other's findings. So I wanted to show you, um, this is telomerase again, but what I really wanted to show you was uh, a picture from a, of my research group from a recent group party, just to give you a feeling of the number of people involved. They, some of them are undergraduate students, which you will be next year, uh, who are doing undergraduate research, uh, either for credit or over the summer, some of them have been supported by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for summer research. Some of them are graduate students who are getting PhD degrees, and some of them are postdoctoral fellows who've already gotten their PhD at another institution and then have come to Colorado for a period of perhaps three years to do additional studies before getting a permanent job on their own. And they come from many different places. They come from Kansas and from Colorado. They come from uh, Baltimore nearby here, and they come from uh, Zurich, Switzerland. They come from Chicago, and they come from Japan and China and uh, everywhere that you could imagine. And then part of the educational process is that we then send them off to uh, different places after they've had some training. And some of the people uh, shown in this particular slide, uh, for example, this woman is now on the faculty at Yale University. Uh, this fellow is on the faculty at Duke University. And so they um, come spend some time with us and then go off and do wonderful things on their own. And it's really their hard work which uh, has been the basis for uh, me being able to present these stories to you over the last two days. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? And we have time for some questions. In the red sweater back there. Yeah, um, I want to know, um, do you have any idea how you would go about testing for what those uh, telomerases that fill the holes, what they're used for, whether it's maturity or storage or whatever? Do you have any idea how you would test for that? So the, so the question is, how would we proceed to ask to try to understand whether these holes are uh, storage uh, depots for telomerase or are involved in maturation or, or to answer this question instead of just speculating about it. And uh, there are really quite a number of possible approaches. What we need is some way to look at the dynamics of, of the operation. What we have right here is a static picture. And what instead we'd like to know is, is the movement in and out. Because if they are storage uh, depots, then there must be a time when molecules are moving in. If those spherical regions are involved in maturation of the particle, then the material moving in and that moving out should be different. It should be matured. What does that mean? Well, it could mean that the RNA moves in there separate from the proteins and that they get together and form telomerase inside of the spheres, and then the stuff that comes out is mature telomerase. So, one thing that we need to do is to have uh, molecular probes to identify the protein subunits of the telomerase as well as the RNA. We'd also, there are ways of pulse labeling molecules so that you can actually follow their movement through a cell. And that could be used to look at the pathway of the molecules into and out of these organelles, either by biochemistry or by this um, sort of cell biolo biology, uh, physical localization. Um, it may be that the RNA is made as a longer precursor and has to be trimmed down to its final active form. Most RNAs in cells do undergo some sort of processing. So if we can find that 
molecule that isn't yet mature, the, the telomerase RNA that's not yet in its final form, we can make a probe for it and we can see where the unmature form is and where the mature form is to get some idea whether the maturation is taking place inside of those spheres or in some other location within the nucleus. So we have lots of ideas, but as of today, I have no answers for you. So as with all of these projects, I hope I've given you the feeling they're ongoing projects. Every time you answer a question in a satisfying way, you typically it leads to two more questions which you would then like to answer. I thank you for your questions. We're going to pause now for closing, and then we'll have time for more questions later. On behalf of the entire audience in the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Tom, we want to thank you for a really marvelous series. And so to our television viewers, we'd like to hear from you, too. Uh, tell us what you found interesting about these lectures and if there's something we can do to make them even more useful to us. At the end of the broadcast, you'll see our mailing address. The Howard Hughes Medical Institute is the largest philanthropy in the country, and as a medical research organization, its primary purpose is to conduct biomedical research through its own investigators like Dr. Check. There are now 280 HHMI investigators located in 62 medical schools, universities, and research institutes across the country. Uh, uh, most of them do not have the Nobel Prize like Dr. Check, but they're making enormously exciting discoveries every day. Things like finding the genes involved in muscular dystrophy, in cystic fibrosis, in high blood pressure, and mental retardation, and exploring the defects in uh, the control mechanisms themselves that lead to cancer, uh, looking at the uh, mechanisms by which AIDS and tuberculosis uh, cause disease, learning how the brain develops and how it learns and remembers. Uh, all of these things are things that we pursue on a daily basis. Uh, in the past 10 years, the Institute has invested over $2 billion in research by its own investigators. In addition to that, however, it's awarded over $450 million in grants. And these are grants intended to strengthen science education and to encourage people like you to pursue careers in science and in teaching. Uh, we want students to learn firsthand that science is not memorizing facts from a book, but it's a wonderful voyage of discovery a journey in which you learn things that no one has learned before, and you've contributed a bit to our, the understanding of the world and its well-being. So on behalf of all of us here, I want to thank Dr. Check. I want to thank the television crew. I want to thank those who have labored behind the scenes here at the Institute to make these uh, lectures such a great success. So at this time of, of, of peace and understanding, we wish you a a new year filled with wonderful happiness and great science. Thank you.